Hi there! Thank you so much for joining me today. This video is my finale for my 13 by Halloween project pan. I'm doing this video in collaboration with a couple other really fantastic YouTubers. I'll have all their information linked below. I would definitely recommend checking them out. I am so excited to see how everybody's finale goes. Today is the 30th. It's the day before Halloween and so the project pan is over and this is all the progress that I've made. I'm excited to share it with you. So I'm just going to grab whatever kind of sticks out to me. And the first product I want to talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lipstick. I didn't have any specific goal of using this up or hitting a certain um, amount used. I didn't want to forget that I have this in my collection. I've mentioned before I much prefer the Bitch Perfect lipstick from this uh, brand. Since the beginning of the project pan I have used this an additional 40 times which I think is fantastic. I'm reaching for it more. I'm remembering that I have it in my collection. Another product that I would consider a success even though probably not everybody will is the ColourPop Flexitarian Highlighter. I had hit pan on it in this project pan and then repressed it. And this was never something I liked on my face. I always liked putting it on my collarbones, but I realized after using it a little bit more that it just turns very glittery on me. Maybe the formula is drying out a little bit and things have changed, but I just don't really like using it anymore on a regular basis because it just is very noticeable. It's very glittery, and that's not really the vibe I'm going for. Originally, I thought, okay, I'll try to use it more. If I don't, if I realize I don't like it, I'll declutter it. But I was looking back on some photos that I had taken for Instagram lately, and I remember taking one whenever I had just gotten rose gold hair and I have this beautiful kind of sheen on my collarbones and I just really like how that looked. So I think for me this isn't going to be like an everyday makeup product but it is something that I still want to hold on to for photos like that for when I'm kind of going for more of like a you know maybe editorial look where I am trying to kind of give that kind of heavy glow. That's something I wouldn't have known if it hadn't have been for the project pan so I'm very grateful for that. Now for the two bronzers that I had in my project pan I had the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil bronzer the light to medium version and the NARS Laguna bronzer and these are both empty and I talked about both of these in a how long does it take to use up makeup video that I just put up a couple weeks ago and I talked about how vastly different these were. One of them took much longer to use up than the other one and one of them I think is worth the money and the other one I don't. So if you're curious to see how many uses it took to finish both of these, what's the cost per use and stuff like that, just more numbers about these products, I would definitely recommend checking out that video. But I'm very excited to have finished two bronzers in the scope of one project pan and I have actually since then used up another bronzer, the uh, Hourglass Dim Light Powder that I use as a bronzer. So that's three bronzers within just a few months time. Um, all of them were more than halfway gone, so it's not like I used up three brand new bronzers, but it's still kind of exciting that I used up three. The next product I want to talk about is the Tarte Party Blush. It's a little mini size. It was a birthday gift from Sephora, I think, last year. And I wanted to hit pan on it and eventually use it up. I did not use it up, but I still got a ton of use out of this. I really feel like I made a lot of progress on this over the course of the last couple of months. I do like it. It's a pretty neutral blush. I'm wearing it today. And I do think it's very versatile and it goes with a lot of different looks. So it's pretty easy to use on a regular basis. But it's definitely not something that I feel like I need to run out and repurchase once it's gone. I have plenty of neutral, natural looking blushes in my collection. There was really nothing super special about this one. Before I move on, I do want to talk about one product that I don't consider a success, and that is the LA Girl Gel Eyeliner. I have no idea where it is. I lost it maybe two months ago, right after my most recent update, and I don't know where I put it. I have no idea where it could have gone, and so obviously I haven't had to, a chance to use it at all. And um, yeah, I, who knows if I would have been able to finish it. Um, I've just been using the Milani Eyeliner in its place and liking it. I did like that eyeliner. It is something that I had to smudge out with a brush if I put it in my inner lash line because it would transfer to my lower lash line. The Milani one doesn't transfer as easily. So I do prefer the Milani one anyway, but if I had the LA Girl eyeliner, I would use it up gladly. Um, I just haven't been able to do that. So we're just going to move right on from that one. The next product I want to talk about is the Ofra Makeup Setting Spray. It's in a Mario Badescu bottle just because I prefer the sprayer on it. And my goal was to hit this little star here on the bottle. And I am happy to say that I hit right at the star. 
I started using this to wet eyeshadows more. I do use it sometimes to set my entire face. I can do that now in the winter time because in the summertime this really didn't do much for oil control, but this is much better for the winter time. So I have been using it a little bit more in the past week or so. I hit my goal on it. I'm right at the halfway mark now, and you may or may not see this in another project pan in the future. Next product is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Foundation in the shade Buff. I have been using this a couple times since my last update and I have been using it to film. I'm wearing it today and I'm wearing it in a couple tutorials for my Milani 5 Looks 2 palette video coming up soon. Still working on it. It's taken a little bit longer than I thought it would to work on it, but I actually like this on my skin better in the winter. You would think with it being a very high coverage foundation, that can emphasize drier patches on your skin if you don't prep your skin properly, but this makes me very oily in the warmer months, and now that it's closer to winter time, the air is a little bit drier, in general the climate is a little bit different, there's less humidity in the air, this is actually performing a lot more nicely on my skin, and so if I wanted to like really use it up, I could use it like on an everyday basis, but I don't really feel like I need to wear this to work. I think this is like a little bit too much for work. So I think that now that we're hitting that time, I can use this more often than I did for the project pan. I just had very few reasons to wear this during the project pan. I finally figured out when is the best time to use this and for what occasions. So now that I have that all figured out, I can probably use this more often. And so in my eyes, I'm going to say this is a success. I'm kind of cheating, if you can tell with some of these products. I didn't make good progress on them, but I still learned something. So I'm counting it as a success, even though I didn't actually make a ton of progress on that one. <laughs> Let's talk about a couple that I did make a lot of progress on. This one is the Soap and Glory One Heck of a Black Powder. I talked about this in my most recent products I've hit pan on videos. I repressed it, hit pan again, and then used it up just a week or so ago. This really lasted the majority of the project pan, and the reason for that was just because I kept it in my backpack and I used a fluffy brush and used it to touch up oily spots on my face. I think it's a good powder. Um, probably not something I'm going to repurchase. There was nothing super special about it, but I am glad to have finished this up and to move it out of my collection. The next product I want to talk about is the Julep Cushion Complexion 5-in-1 Skin Perfector with Turmeric. I'm in the shade 130 Ivory. This was a free gift with purchase in an Ulta order, and I have finally finished it up. I only just finished using this yesterday. Literally yesterday. I got past the window where you couldn't see it anymore, you couldn't see product anymore in that little window, and there just must have been a ton of product like right there at the very end because I would click and click and click and more product would come out every single time I used it. I just used it to kind of add a little bit more um, coverage on my cheeks where I have a little bit more of redness and I just used it to kind of be a face concealer. I didn't really like how this uh, performed on my T-zone, I didn't like it as a under eye concealer, I didn't like it as a foundation. Um, this isn't something I would repurchase, but I am very glad to have used it up and to move it out of my collection. The next product I have is from Sol de Janeiro. It's the Brazilian Kiss Lip Balm, and I did flatten it out and hit the plastic part, and then I started digging out. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this. I'm not sure if it's focusing, but if you can see, I've really dug quite a bit out of this container, but it's just going so far down. There is so much product in here. I really think I have maybe another week of use out of this to really dig everything out, but I've used so much of it that I still consider it pretty much done. This was a good product, but it wasn't super moisturizing. I still very much prefer the NYX lip balm over this, and so I'm not going to repurchase. I think this is like $19 for the full price anyway, which I don't think is very much worth it given that it's not a super moisturizing product and it is something that I have to reapply multiple times throughout the day. But I am glad to see that there is a ton of extra product inside the container so you can really get a lot of product for your money. And the very last product I have is the NYX Dark Circle Concealer in the shade Fair. I had the tiniest little bit of baby pan in my most recent update, and since then I've really dug out quite a crater out of this product. I enjoy it, I use it every day, and I'm glad to see I'm getting so much use out of it, especially considering how affordable it is. I think this is a really great value for your money. It's a good product and something I will continue using until it's finished. 
And that is everything I have to talk about today. Like I said, please go check out all the other finales. It's a very exciting time for Project Panning right now. Lots of finales coming out. I don't know if I'll start a new Project Pan right away. I think I might wait until the beginning of next year. I think I just kind of want a chance to play around with my makeup and really freely shot my stash. My next makeup basket video for next month is going to be really exciting because I have some new products and also I have free reign to try out all new products, stuff that I haven't tried because I don't have any Project Pan products to uh, work on. So I think that's going to be a very liberating feeling and I think I'm just going to take a break for a little bit and come back at the beginning of next year with a brand new project pan, but who knows, maybe I'll get the bug and kind of miss it and want to start a new one, who knows, I'll let you know. Before I wrap up this video, I did want to ask who your favorite project panner is. I feel like the people I watch, they all do everything so differently. There are some people who I really enjoy the way that they explain the, the products. I like some people who show their photos a certain way. I feel like everybody kind of does it a little bit differently and I think that's really cool. And I wanted to ask if you would share with me some of your favorite project panners. I also follow a lot of people on Instagram, so if you have any um, Instagram project panners, please let me know in the comments as well. I just kind of want to learn about what other people are doing out there in the project painting community and I would love for you to share some of your favorite project panners with me. But in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys!